punctures. They are the bane of any cyclist, road or off-road. And despite all the innovation that we have, we're still getting them. So let's have a look at all the reasons why you might be getting punctures and what you can do about it. Now there's a number of reasons you could be getting punctures. Now it could be down to something with a traditional inner tube setup, it could be to do with tubeless, it could be to do with having a lack of protection in your system. Whatever it is, we're gonna cover it. So let's start by looking at the old fashioned inner tube. Okay, inner tubes first, right? They've been around from the beginning and many people will still use them, whether that's because they don't wanna to go to tubeless or perhaps you can't afford to move up to a system that involves having to buy dedicated components for your bike that are tubeless compatible. So, yes, you can keep repairing your inner tube. Yes, it's a bit of a pain, but you can get inner tube sealant. So it works in a similar way to tire sealant that you'd see in tubeless setups, but goes inside your inner tube. Now it works really effectively with thorns and smaller punctures, but it won't help you out when you get to a pinch puncture, which you might have heard referred to as a snake bite. Now the telltale signs of one of those is you'll have two little slits in your tube. You might be wondering how that got there because it looks kind of like a, a snake has literally bit it. Now what happens is looking at this tire profile here, you have your rim that holds the tire in place and over a big impact, your tire is squashed down and the rim itself squashes the inner tube against the obstacle. Let's say it's a rock and you get those two slit marks basically and it slashes the inner tube open, rendering it completely useless. Now, unless you're using a seriously heavy duty tire, you're still gonna be susceptible to getting pinch punctures with inner tubes. However, if that's not much of an issue for you and you just want a bit more puncture resistance on a standard setup, then it's definitely worth looking at these inner tube solutions that are available on the market because they do work pretty well. Okay then, so you might think by moving up to a tubeless setup that you're never gonna see a puncture again. Well, uh, it's not necessarily true because of the fact punctures come in a variety of annoying ways. Yes, you can have foreign objects penetrate the tire and to a degree, tubeless solution will actually seal that up as you ride. That's one of the huge benefits of the system, but they're not invincible. So let's start by looking at how the tubeless system works. Now you have a dedicated rim tape that sits on the rim, sealing it off. That in combination with the tubeless specific tire creates a cavity. Inside that cavity, you have the tubeless sealant, which in turn seals it up. As any foreign objects penetrate that, that sealant on the inside, it kind of has little particles in it that work a little bit like the blood does in your body. Uh, it congeals effectively, bunging up those holes as they occur. It's a really good system, but if you haven't taped up those rims in the first place, or even set it up properly, it's quite likely that you're going to be losing air from the system. Now have a good look around your rim. You might notice that there'll be a couple of tiny little holes there. Now those holes are put their way in the manufacturing process to allow water to drain out. So obviously air is going to find its way in there, which is why you need to make sure your rims are taped up using a proper tape that's the correct width. There's loads of different options available on the market, so make sure you get one that suits your rims. The next thing to consider the actual tubeless valves themselves. There's loads of different options available on the market. And no matter what they all claim, the most important thing is the actual rubber grommet where they sit into the actual rim. No one rim shape is the actual same. Some have a more oval feeling to them, some have a flat basin to the bottom of them. And you have to make sure that that rubber grommet correlates to the inside of the rim. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a good seal at this point. Now, many valve sets, thankfully today, come with different rubber grommets, just like these muck-off ones. They come with loads of different rubber grommets to suit different size rims. So don't just put the first ones on that yours come with. Check it for the fit. Make sure you get the best fit possible. And of course, then you wanna make sure you get them inflated correctly and the bead is correctly seated. If your bead isn't seated all the way around the rim, air can still escape. And of course, if you burp a tire when you hit a turn really hard, you know, 90 degree turn, sort of a bit of a cutty style thing. You can roll a tire out, out of the rim cavity, essentially blowing air out the system. It's another classic way of losing air. Now also, you might think by having a tubular setup, you're not gonna have those snake bite punctures that old inner tube lovers suffer from. But that's not necessarily true either. 
because lightweight tires are very susceptible to splitting, especially if you're choosing to ride a lightweight tire to make your heavy duty trail bike feel a bit livelier on the trails, you can actually split the tires because rim technology now, they're getting so much stronger that they can actually split that tire and the same sort of impact. So what you'd want to be considering if this is something you're suffering from is a more appropriate tire. Something with some sidewall armor like this enduro casing or even a downhill tire if you're really heavy on the bikes. Look for something that has sidewall armor in. So this is a Vittoria tire and it has beautiful inserts in the tire sidewall here. You can see it's like a teardrop shape of red rubber. That is designed specifically to stop those pinch punctures that you could get on that casing. Now, if you are suffering from tire damage from those sort of rim impacts, uh, more notably, if you're running a lighter weight tire like this one, you might want to consider something like an insert. Obviously, this is just a little core sample I've taken of one, but this will sit on the inside of your tire. They don't take up much room or even much weight at all, but it gives you an extra bit of stability on that tire. It means you can experiment with tire pressure a bit more, but it also means when your tire bottoms against an object, it's far less likely to damage that tire. Now, of course, having a decent tire sealant on the inside of your tire, that's another method to stop getting punctures or at least to reduce the punctures you're getting. Now, don't skimp on this, get yourself some decent sealant and use a lot of it. So they will recommend you, whatever brand you are, the minimum amount you need to make it work. My recommendation, actually, if you're running a more heavy duty bike on the rear end, go for more sealant because the sealant does stick around the inside of the tire, giving it a bit of a skin on there. The more sealant you put in there, the more likelihood you are to seal up any punctures that you get. And also, if you're a really hardcore rider and you're burping tires and stuff, you're losing sealant as you're riding. So putting a bit more sealant in is definitely gonna help you. But don't go crazy. Don't just go like filling your tires up because you will notice the movement of that sealant sloshing around. There's a fine line between how little and how much you should actually put in. Now also make sure you're topping up on your sealant from time to time. Sealant naturally will dry out. The whole job of it is to dry when it meets with air and to congeal and patch up the holes effectively. So what do you think is gonna happen if you never touch it? It's gonna dry up. Now this does vary depending on the brand of sealant you have and the temperatures that you ride in. You might ride in extremely cold or extremely hot climates, in which case you're gonna to need to monitor how much sealant is in your tires quite a lot more often than you think. Knowing your tire pressure can really make a difference between suffering punctures and not. Now there's one argument to run a firmer tire to avoid getting punctures when you're riding over roots and so forth. However, having a softer tire can actually be a bit more resistant to things like thorns getting in there. So I suggest that everyone get yourself a tire gauge, whether it's a digital one or it's an old school one with a little dial and a needle on there and experiment with tire pressure. Now, tire pressure varies immensely on how heavy you are and also how heavy you are in the way that you ride. Someone that's very aggressive on a bike will actually need to run a bit more pressure in the tires and probably need to run a tire that's got a bit more support as well. A tire with more support, you can run at lower pressure than a tire with less support. There's a lot of experimentation to be done with this. And again, experiment with tire pressure, you can not only start reducing the amount of punctures you're getting, you can actually increase your rolling speed and increase your grip. There's loads to be had from having a little gauge like this and spending a bit of time experimenting out on the trails. Okay, so with all these things going on with tubeless and you can still get punctures, I can feel some people out there that are running inner tubes saying, well, you can still get punctures, so why not just run inner tubes? Well, I think the complete opposite way. You run a tubeless setup for all of the advantages and the fact that you're losing that amount of weight out of your wheel set and you can still carry one of these. So absolute worst case, you can put a tube in to get home. So at the end of the day, the systems do kind of work together. However, there's some other ways that you can repair a tubeless tire. Taking some tips from other motorsports like motocross and all-terrain vehicles, you can actually use these. It's like a little rubber worm made of a very soft, tacky rubber. And you can use these to stab directly into the hole of the tire carcass. If you have like, let's say you've got a slash in there from a bit of glass or whatever, you can literally stab it straight in, pull it out and you'll leave the worm inside that tire. And if you haven't, if, well, if you've done it fast enough, you might not have lost any pressure at all. But if you have, you can either top up with a pump or if you're in a race or outdoor situation where you need to get out of there, use a CO2 cartridge 
and get some air back in the system and get back riding again. Okay, so we have touched on it briefly a bit earlier on, but tire casing is really important to uh, the fact if you're suffering from getting punctures. Now, different tire casings are kind of applicable to different styles of riding. Like a cross country racer, for example, wants the ultimate in a super lightweight tire, and they're willing to sacrifice a bit of durability and puncture resistance in the name of lightweight and rolling, like basically they want the least rolling resistance possible. Whereas an enduro racer or a downhill racer, Really, they need the maximum amount of protection possible, which comes at a massive weight deficit. Okay, so just have a look at the casing on these two tires, for example. This is a cross-country trail tire, so even this has more protection than the super lightweight tires. But you can see just how thin the casing is on here. And the reason it's thin, other than to save weight, is to offer a really supple ride. So even if you're running at a firmer pressure, let's say 30 psi, the tire will feel very supple over the roots and rocks and things. Whereas if you're running 30 PSI in a thicker, heavier duty tire, it can feel very hard. Of course, the benefit of running those heavier duty tires is you can lower the pressure to get a better footprint on the ground. Now, there is a lot of different options out there with tire casings. There's single ply, there's double ply. There's even four ply tires out there that weigh an absolute ton, but are seemingly invincible when you plow them through rock gardens. So really, it's about selecting the correct tires for you. Now, it doesn't mean you have to have a pair of them either. You could, for example, have a more heavy duty tire, like an enduro spec tire on the rear, and you could have a lighter trail tire on the front. And likewise, you could also take that combination and you could use, use an insert on the rear. I actually like to run cross country race tires on my cross country bike, and I use inserts in them just to give myself a little bit extra a little bit extra, basically, but I like the way the tire rides, that supple riding feeling. You just can't get that with other tires, no matter what pressure you're running at. And I'm well aware I could risk splitting the tire, but prepared to take that penalty, basically, to have that. And then the same, I don't like the weight of enduro tires, so I'd actually rather run a trail casing, as I have on this bike here, and take my chance. I run a little bit more sealant on the inside, and I'm careful with my tire pressures. Whereas other riders, for example, don't want to have to worry about that stuff so they're going to run that heavier duty tire which means you can just smack into stuff and not worry about the punctures so if you're suffering punctures and it's down to your tires then really you might want to have a re-evaluation on what you're running on your bike and the last one if you're suffering from punctures is you it's your riding <laughs> no offense but line choice is everything and yes, you may love riding through those rock gardens or airing into that blind bank that might have a tree stump or two in it. But if you're getting punctures because of your hitting things, then maybe you need to re-evaluate the way that you're riding your bike. Now, I'm not suggesting you slow down or do anything boring. Just have a look at what you're doing. See how you can pick different lines. Take advice from some of the pros. We've got loads of videos over on GMBN about all of this stuff. That's what they're there for. Make the most of them. Uh, hopefully this video has been useful to you and giving you a few reasons why you might be suffering punctures at least, uh, so you can get your head around it. One of my honest advice, go tubeless. It's the best, honestly. <laughs> See you in the next video.